All right, guys, here we have a quote from Banquo who is warning his friend of best to maybe chill out a little bit and not take these witches too seriously because they could be trying to do him harm. So, Macbeth is wrapped with all. He's taken the witch's prophecies that he will be king very seriously. He's also obviously listened to the prophecy that Banquo's children will be king. But Banquo says, hold on a minute. Maybe this isn't such a great idea. Immediately in this quote, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, we see this word harm. Banquo is clear that the witches are dangerous characters who should not be trusted. The harm that they do to Scotland seems a long way off at this point for the audience, but Banquo is clear that this doesn't going to end well. So really, harm pops up as a warning to Macbeth. Let's not listen to them. I don't think they're trying to do good stuff for us. They're trying to cause us problems. And he describes them as instruments of darkness. Instruments, to me, suggest they're actually used by a higher force. It's cryptically later in the play they talk about our masters. Now, we're not really sure who their masters are, um, perhaps the devil himself, but if they are instruments... Perhaps they are being used by someone else to get to Macbeth and get to Scotland. But nevertheless, they are instruments of darkness. And darkness here symbolises evil. All the bad things that happen in the play happen at night, happen in darkness. Killing King Duncan at night, uh, Banquo's murder at night. The witches wait till ear the setting of the sun till it gets dark to do their business. Everything bad happens at night. So darkness here really symbolises evil and they are therefore instruments of darkness, instruments of evil. And they tell us truths. Banquo says at the end of this line that truths that will be betrayed. Now, this idea of appearance versus reality in the play is fairly common. You've probably seen about it. Lady Macbeth talks about looking like the innocent flower but be the serpent under it. Duncan speaks regularly about, you know, trusting the Thane of Cawdor, only to really be let down by him when he rebelled. So this idea of appearance versus reality, truth and deceit comes throughout the entire of the play. Um, so another link there for you to talk about. And in the link quotations box on the left hand side there, we can start to see a little bit about darkness and a little bit there about appearance versus reality. Now, down in the context box I've got there for you, um, just some sort of information around the heightened excitement about riches in the time of James I, which I'm sure you know about, and there's lots more about on the website.